So we'll do one more example, and then we'll look at a different way to compute arc length. So our curve will be x over 2 to the 2 thirds power. And we'll go x interval from 0 to 2. So compute the arc length, and then tell me what the problem is. So you'll almost be able to compute the arc length, but you'll get one issue at the very end. So I'll rewrite the arc length on the board, so you don't have to flip back to your notes. So you got a y, you just got to find y prime, square it, plug it in, and your a and b are 0 and 2. So we could probably integrate this. It might be a little bit tricky. So I think if I was going to integrate this, this constant's kind of ugly. So what I'm going to do is factor it out. So I factored out carefully, it's squared, so it's going to factor out as out of a square root as not squared. And the other th issue that I had to deal with, there was a 1 here, so when I factor it out, I have to un uh, multiply by it, so I have to divide by it. So I multiply by the reciprocal. Uh, you can check if you distribute back in, you have to 
write it as square root squared, and it will turn the first term into a 1. All right, even so, we could write this as, I don't know why I'm still in red, I need the red marker. That's just a constant, so it's not going to affect things too much. Um, and because I wrote that as a, we can write that as 1 over a. This almost looks like a trig sub, except what's the problem? It's got the square root. Yeah, that weird power on x, if that was just squared. So I could write, so the negative power <coughs> is a reciprocal. Should be able to write it like that. Reciprocal. X. Ooh. Should be the cube root of x. So x to the one third. I don't think I've ever integrated this one before. All right. Now it's in a relatively good form for a trig sub. The only thing I have to do is be super careful. What's inside that blue circle is going to be the trig function. So what trig function do I use here? There's only three choices. Tangent. Should be a tangent, because tan squared plus one is secant squared. So the way you would set this up, that whole thing that I circled is tangent theta. So before that was just x. Now that whole thing is tangent. I have a feeling this is going to be a little bit ugly. So I can apply the derivative operator to this. And of course, on the right side, I got that tangent, derivative tangent, secant squared theta d theta. But on the right side, it's a little bit tricky. x to the negative third, which is negative one third, x to the negative four thirds, dx. So any derivative questions on that? If it was just x equals, derivative x is one. So normally derivative x is just the one dx. Why did you? Uh d the entire thing instead of taking a dx or d theta? So I, you could take a d, 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 d theta, absolutely. So if I take d d theta, this is what I get at the very end, right here. And then the, the last step is basically move d theta to the other side. Okay. Uh, and this yeah. comes from the chain rule is why you get that extra term, because we took a theta derivative of the variable x, or a function of, of the variable x. So that's the, you get that in the implicit derivative case. So is the one on your far left, that d theta, right on the end, supposed to be there? Nope. Although I'm about to multiply by the d theta, so it will, on this step, it will appear there. Okay. Thank you. Yep. dx equals sec squared theta d theta. All right, so everything is good except that stupid term in the front. Now, I don't have that term anywhere up here. So what we usually do, uh, that constant, I'm not worried about the constant so much, although I don't see a 3. So we'll take this whole thing to the other side. So we have dx equals negative 3x to the 4 thirds sec squared theta d theta. So that negative 3 is just fine. That's not a problem. What is the problem on the right side? I get x's and theta's mixed. So how in the world do I turn x into theta? So the answer is they're related like that. So I just have to mess around a little bit with this. So this is x to the negative one third equals tan theta, and I need to figure out what is x to the four thirds. So this is x to the negative third. So x to the, so if I write this as one over x to the one third, that's tangent theta. So 
So reciprocate both sides. 1 over tangent is cotangent. Almost there. I just have to raise both sides of the fourth power. Fourth power, yeah. So this is 1 third to the fourth power, <laughs> cot to the fourth theta. And of course, I do power of a power as a product, which is why I did that. So we get negative 3. So this whole thing turns into cotangent to the fourth theta sec squared theta d theta. This is a slightly ugly thing to plug in. There may be some trig cancellation. All right, so now you can finally take out dx and replace with this right here. So we have 1 over a times negative 3 integral. I'm not using endpoints because we switched our x's out, so no reason to write endpoints. a squared plus that thing I circled is tangent squared theta, d theta, ooh, not just d theta, cotangent of the fourth secant squared All right. Oh no, I messed up. What did I mess up? Well, what I wrote is correct, but why can't I just say that that is secant squared? Is any number squared plus tangent theta squared? No, 1 plus that. Or if I had an a squared in front, that would work just as well. But I don't have an a squared in front. So if I write that in, obviously that's not correct. But <coughs> I fix it by making my original substitution out a tangent theta. It's been a while since I did one of these trig subs. So that should be a tangent theta. Good news is that constant just sort of filters through everywhere. Constant multiple rule. So derivative is just a times that. Three, we just need another a in here. A shouldn't really change anything else except it's going to mess this guy up. Another a, a. A, so we got 1 over A here. Now we have 1 over A to the fourth. So divided by A to the fourth power. I'll just rewrite this one last time. Negative 3 over a cubed. I didn't change it too much. So finally, now, a squared plus a squared tan squared is a squared sec squared. Cotangent and secant, 1 over cos. Cotangent is cosine over sine. That cancels out a little bit. So let's rewrite cotangents and sines and cosines. So that's cos fourth over sine fourth secant, one over cos squared d theta. So this 
this is a secant theta, which is a times one over cos theta. And we got cos squared reduces this to just a cos squared. We got one more cancellation, and they get to bring the a out front. Negative three over a squared integral cos turns that. This is a super easy integral. If you notice one trick you have to do. How do we integrate this? You can do it. You could do it last quarter. Don't need anything from chapter 8 anymore. What's good use of? Sine for theta. Should we go with sine? So my general rule for u sub, pick the easiest thing. So of course the easiest thing is theta, but I've probably showed you so far that just changes their variable. Literally, you erase the thetas and drop u's everywhere. So that doesn't do any significant, any actual change. So we'll go, so what happens if I go cos theta? That's not too helpful because I don't have, in the numerator, I got cosine. So what's the next best choice? Let's go sine theta. Oh, look at this, cos theta d theta. So that's exactly what we got. Integral, 1 over, now I got sine to the fourth, which is u to the fourth, du. All right, integrate, that's u to the negative fourth. Add 1 is u to the negative third, divided by negative 3. Oh, that cancels out that negative 3. Look at that. So I do not have endpoints because I'm in use and I have to come back to thetas. So now we're back in thetas and we can go back to something else. And I'm going to have to use this right here. So let's rewrite this. Now we're going to write our triangle out, and we have angle theta right there, adjacent over opposite, so our adjacent is x to the negative one-third, our opposite is a, so hypotenuse will be a squared plus x to the negative two-thirds. Any trig questions? I'm going over this carefully because it's just, it's x to the negative one third, not just a regular x, so it's a bit more complicated. It's all the same steps, you just have to do them carefully. And finally, what in the world is sine theta? So what is sine theta in this triangle? Yep, so we got A over this square root. Almost there. We got to reciprocate it, so that's easy to do. 1 over sine theta. So square root A squared plus x negative 2 thirds over A. Now we're ready to sub this in. 
and we've got a qubit. So we're going to have what I just wrote down cubed. We're finally back to x's, so I could finally write down the x endpoints, which were 0 and 2. All right. We'll get some of these a's to combine. So we have a 1 over a to the fifth. And we'll just write this uh, a squared plus 1 over x to the 2 thirds raised to something 3 halves. So everything so far so good. We're going to have about to have a problem though. So I'm going to plug in the 2 first. So an ugly number, but number minus now I'm going to plug in 0. So what's the problem? Can't divide by 0. Took a long time to realize that, or a lot of steps to get down to uh, the fact that we can't solve it like this. All right, so what do we do? When I teach you improper integrals, there is a way to do this. And what you're going to see soon, this 0 right here, what you're going to do is basically Somewhere back in the original, x from 0 to 2. So 0 is the value that gave us a problem. So what we're going to do is take a limit, and we'll use a letter like we used a already. So we'll let b approach 0. And we'll go from b to 2. So eventually, what we're going to be able to do is recover from this scenario. <coughs> so instead of using the number 0, we'll use the number b, and we'll take a limb as b approaches, sorry, I did too many h approaching 0 definition of derivatives. So we'll take a limit as b approaches 0 from the positive side, and that is important. But we can't do that now. We don't have that trick. So we're basically going to start the entire problem all over again. I don't think I've ever solved this one all the way out. Uh, Let's look and see how we could see that issue before we spent five or 10 minutes trying to get down to there. So our original function, y equals, can you plug in 0 here in our original? Yes. No problem. What about the derivative? We'll use this form right here. Can you plug in the derivative? Can you plug in 0? So you're dividing by 0, but it doesn't look like you're dividing by 0. What in here tells you you're going to be divided by 0 when you plug in 0? That stupid negative sign messes us up. So our original function was OK. You were allowed to plug in 0, but our derivative not allowed to plug in 0. So that's going to be a problem. So if, you can't, if your derivative is not defined on your entire interval, you're going to have problems. So right here. So it's not defined on the entire interval 0 to 2. It was only one value that it was not defined on. Specifically, x equals 0 is not defined on. But that's enough to screw up everything. Now in the real world, you could just say, hey, let's just go from like 0. 0.0001 up to 2. And that'll probably be close enough. But unfortunately, we're not in the real world, so we're going to need to solve this a different way. We're in calculus class. So this is something you can do in the real world. Um, Mainly because uh, there is no exactness in the real world. You just measure to certain tolerances, uh, and that's good enough. So what we're going to do instead, there's really no way to sidestep this problem the way that we went. 
So we're going to do instead is we're going to write here we had x as a function of y as a function of x. We're going to solve it for x. So we'll have x as a function of y. So we're basically going to change variables. And then we'll have a dy integral. Uh, and the intuition for why this messed up, this is, if you graph this out, we don't generally graph things to the 2 thirds power. Actually, now I want to, I don't think I've ever graphed x to the 2 thirds power. We'll just run over to. Go to Desmos. No, oh, looks like my add-on is not so great on this site. There we go. Oh, that's not what I want. That didn't work out. 92. I want parentheses, two thirds. All right. So from this graph, what is the derivative at zero? It's a little tricky to tell. So certainly something weird is happening. It's a corner point. So if I look close by here, the derivative is negative. This isn't the best zoom window. Oh, there we go. What's happening with this derivative when we get close to 0? This is good. So it's going to be undefined, but Geometrically, that means vertical. Yeah. And derivative is going to be vertical. So that's the problem uh, with using the arc length as a function of x. You don't get a derivative, or your derivative is undefined at 0. And so graphically, you're generally not going to have access to a graph on an ugly function like this. So the way you'll figure it out is when you take your derivative, if you look, you can see oh, I can't plug in every value. So that's where you're going to notice. But I just wanted to show you this is what's going on with the graph. So what we're going to do is switch and write it as a function of y. And then our derivative will basically be flat instead of vertical. So we'll go back. All right, so we're going to start over. So I'll just rewrite the problem. So now it's going to be dx over dy squared dy. And a and b are now, because we're doing a dy integral, they're now y values, a and b. So really good chance they're not 0 and 2 anymore. They probably change values. All right, so step one, I need to write x as a function of y. All you have to do is solve for x. So when in doubt, do PEMDAS and go up the PEMDAS ladder. PEMDAS, order of operations. You don't have to go up it. If you don't go up the order of operations, you just have to be careful about what operation that you apply your operation to both sides. So I do see division. 
except it's hidden inside of parentheses. So I cannot address the, uh, the division first. How do I get that 2 thirds power out? So we actually have to, we're forced to do the um, parentheses. Because of the parentheses, we actually have to do our exponent first. So how do I get that 2 thirds power out? What power do I raise each side to? Three halves. Three halves, the reciprocal power, because powers of powers are products. So 2 thirds times 3 halves is first power. And last step, super easy. 2 times y to the 3 halves equals x. So I need dy, I need dx dy now. So this is, this is the curve we're going to find the length of. So I need to take a derivative. Normally we went ddx. However, I don't want to do the dx derivative. I need to do the dy derivative. And that comes from our length formula. And this is, I should have written, I'm going to go back up to where I first wrote this equation down and write a note next to it. Maybe I already wrote that note, but, oh, here we go. It is written there. When x is a function of y. So mathematically, that's how you write it. Or I could write it when x is a function of y. And of course, g prime of y, which is what you see on the inside here, g prime of y is dx over dy. So f prime of x, normally f prime of x is what you're used to. That's dy over dx. But this one is a function of y. So the roles of x and y are changed. All right, so we got our g prime of y. No, we're going to get our g prime of y. That's our function of y. I need to find g prime of y. So take a y derivative of this. And our derivative is 3, 3y to the half power, because our, when you multiply by 3 halves, that half cancels the 2. So you just have 3y to the 1 half power. So that's g prime of y. Of course, you're going to need g prime of y squared. So I'll go ahead and do that right now. It's going to be 9y. Oh, it looks really nice. That should be one indication this is probably a better way to solve it. Your derivative is not miserably bad. So our integral looks super easy. 1 plus 9y square root d y. What's the only other thing I need to do before I actually start doing calculus? Put A and B in the terms of y. Yeah, I get A and B, and I need them written as uh, y values, so not x values. So I need to convert. Convert. There we So if you knew x values, how do you turn them into y values? That's easy. We have our y equals somewhere. y equals x over 2 to the 2 thirds power. So that's how x and y are related. So I'm just going to plug in 0 and see what we get. So 0 raised to the 2 thirds is 0. So that's our first value. Our second value, y equals 2 over 2 raised to the 2 thirds. So 
that's a 1 to the 2 thirds power, which is a 1. So we're going to go from y value 0 to y value 1. So that integral is relatively easy to solve. What's the only trick you really have to do on this integral? Don't want to go, that'd be overkill. And I'm not sure, that would probably not be, if it was y squared, definitely. U sub, so we got 1 plus 9y, derivative is 9 dy. So you don't have a 9 dy, so you write dy is 1 ninth du, and the rest is pretty much stuff you've done before. So make sure you come back to y's before you plug in 0 and 1. So if you find yourself going down a road that is incredibly ugly, like this first one that we went down, chances are you're not doing what I want you to be doing. Or you're doing a web work problem that was randomly generated and just gives you horrible numbers. That can happen. Uh, but the quizzes are not randomly generated. I try to give numbers that are relatively nice. So if you see something like this happening on a quiz, you're probably going down the scenic route. Oh, we just did one problem. You know math is getting serious when you do one problem in a class. At least you finished it well. We got close to finishing it. As close as we're going to get.